Mark Crawley, thank you so much for supporting Shades of Noir. I mean, without you, I don't think we would have been here. I mean, I don't think we would continue the work that we do. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. I mean, I, I'm fully aware of the tragic situation with the tube strike today, so I, I really do appreciate the full house that we have today. Um, well, what I wanted to do today is um, maybe start by talking about what Shades of Noir is because there seems to be uh, a bit of confusion that Shades of Noir is uh, a program of activity, a campaign that is just for black minority ethnic students. I want to say here very clearly that that is not the case. This program of activity is for everybody. It's an opportunity for all of us to think about our curriculums, think about our working environment, and consider whether it is representative of the globalised environment that we all live in. Now, Shades of Noir, as Martin quite kindly said, was, is a website. It is a uh, series of debates, which we talked quite a lot in the last phase. We talked quite a lot. So people became familiar with some of the terms, some of the statistics, some of the issues that surround the degree attainment. But we didn't really unpack higher education. Um, and today, that's what I would like to talk about. Higher education currently struggles, both at high levels, medium levels, and the student levels in uh, representation. And when I say high levels, I'm talking about the, the senior management. You know, there, there isn't enough representation. If you look at your course leaders, most of them are white. Generally, they are white males, although there is a growing consensus that there are female representation. This is not acceptable as far as the wider community is concerned. And what Shades of Noir is trying to do is to highlight this and think about strategies and opportunities where we can make change. And when, when I say we, I don't just mean me. I mean all of us. Every single one of us here has a responsibility to support change if you don't feel that what you see around you is being fair or appropriate. Now, I wanted to talk about phase two. Um, we have got a website, yes, and the website has been uh, revamped and revisited and developed based on your feedback. Um, we're quite lucky in that uh, SILTAD has an inclusive practice unit where the students has contributed, who are student teachers, contributed to really unpacking the current website. And all of their contributions we've tried to use uh, to develop this site. But in addition to that, what we're trying to help or aid is the curriculum change, a more globalised curriculum, one that repre represents and reflects all of us. Um, and, then, and then hopefully those changes will become normal. And then before you know it, maybe we will have a, a black, Asian or ethnic minority representation as a course director, as a... Um, as a dean, as a head of college, quite possibly, when things become normal. 20 years ago, there was a situation in art and design where it was mainly men. Mainly men that ran the universities, mainly men that orchestrated the curriculums. And through positive action, there was change. Now, we're quite lucky here in that we have a high number of female representation at senior level. But the, the fact is we don't have a high number or very many of, of representation of BME, women or men. And that's, that has to change. When students come to me, they generally come to Shades of Noir or me or one of the team and they say, when is this going to change? All the work that you're doing, when is this going to change? Now, we're quite lucky here today we have some decision makers. So I pose it to you, when is it going to change? When are we going to really see the change and reflection of our student body in our staffing body? When are we going to see the representation and change in our curriculum? 
Now, on a positive note, because that's a bit, uh, you know, uh, on a positive note, there has been some headway, and I think we should celebrate that. So Shades of Noir, as you may know, had the very first all-black alumni, very high profile, some very big names, exhibiting at the University of the Arts, Central St. Martin's Leatherby Gallery. And we were absolutely excited by that. But it can't stop there. So what's next? What's next for Shades of Noise? We're going to be having another, uh, uh, another exhibition. And we, again, are going to have high-profile exhibitors from the BME community exhibiting. But the difference is, this time, we will be having students and recent graduates exhibiting alongside them. The plan of action is to highlight that the curriculum can actually afford diversity and we can actually benefit from diversity. So these students and recent graduates we work in alongside these high profile, well established alumni to create individual, unique pieces of work. I mean, for, for many that might seem, you know, it's, it's nothing unusual. To be honest, it's never been done before. We have never had Yinka Shinobore and let's say, Ose, who's going to be talking later, exhibiting side by side. Why is that? We aim to challenge this. There's a voice for everybody here. And um, I hope tonight, I mean, I'm, going to, I'm not going to say more because I think there's so much more to say. I'd rather hear your questions and I want to uh, uh, allow time for that. But tonight, I hope you ask us questions, questions that you've been toying with, questions that you've, you have on your journey, you gained on your journey here, questions about the university, questions about Shades of Noir, questions about the curriculum. Don't be shy tonight. This is once, we don't get this very often, these kinds of opportunities. So please, it's being recorded as well. So, you know, it is noted. Thank you.